I threw myself a concert at home. Yo, COVID sucks, especially if you're somebody like me whose best personality trait used to be live music. That is why I decided to bring the concert home. I bought this LED strip and I created this nifty little circuit so that I could sync these bad boys to music and get the immersive experience. And of course, you guys aren't here to just watch me dance to some flashing lights. So I'm gonna show you what went into the circuit and how you can recreate it at home. Quickly before we continue, I would like to thank JLC PCB for printing these six circuit boards and making this project possible. The music comes in down here through an aux cord, goes into this chip called the MSG EQ7, which takes audio that looks maybe something like this and splits it up into seven different bands based on frequency. The chip is able to convert the values of these bands into an analog signal which goes into the Arduino, outputs over here, and goes into this circuitry over here. Look at the size of these capacitors. I accidentally ordered the wrong size, and um, these are just comically large. <laughs> What's going on here is that there's an R, G, and B value that gets input into the lights that plug in right here. That's a general gist of the circuit. Let's talk about the building process. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing is we're powering this Arduino using a power supply. And this Arduino is providing some sort of voltage to an LED in series with a resistor. And we're connecting this to the wiper of a potentiometer. Using the potentiometer allows us to control the amount of current that's actually flowing through the LED so that we can brighten or dim it. Next, we connect the potentiometer to the analog input of the Arduino to simulate the music's analog signals. The Arduino takes this value, outputs it onto an output pin using PWM. Now, you could connect this output directly to the LED in our previous example, and that would be a really good intermediate step, but here we connected it directly to the LED strip and built out the part to power it. So there are two things to discuss here. One of them is what is PWM? And the other is why do we need all of these extra parts before feeding the signal into the LED strip? Let's answer the first question. So PWM stands for pulse width modulation and it's used to dim the LEDs. Basically, the human eye isn't perfect. There's a phenomenon called persistence of vision where if light is coming into your eye and it stops, you still perceive that light to exist for a small, tiny period of time after it stopped. So if we flash a light on and off really quickly, the human eye can't actually tell that it's flashing and just perceives it to be on the entire time. And we can use this principle to our advantage to actually give the illusion of dimming or brightening an LED. So the next question is why the IR2125s and the MOSFETs? We use the MOSFETs to turn the power on and off to the LEDs because it's a voltage driven switch. Now the Arduino only outputs five volts, but these MOSFETs need 12 volts to turn on. In addition, we are also charging the internal capacitor of the FET. And since the Arduino can only output or sync 50 milliamps, this process is then slow and it takes really long for the MOSFET to turn on and off. Then essentially it just acts as a resistor. Bam, that's where the IR2125 comes in and this takes a five volt signal from the Arduino and converts it to 12 volts. In addition, it provides a two amp source and a one amp sink so that the switch can turn on and off really quickly. Problem solved. Great, we have our circuit set up. Let's talk about the code behind the scenes. So here's the code, this is what it looks like. And up here, we're just setting a couple of variables. Over here, again, some more variables, but we're keeping track of our pins. So these are the PWM pins, which will output to red, green, or blue. And then we have our analog pin as well, that's taking in the music input. 
And then this will just keep track of the seven values that the MSG EQ7 outputs. Here we're just setting up things to be output pins. And this is where the bulk of the interesting stuff happens. All right, so I'm just going to go over the interesting parts of this loop. So first, what's going on is it takes the MSG EQ7 output and it reads that and then maps it to a value between 0 and 255. And then we're going to store that in our list over here and then sum everything up so that we can do some normalization cutoff stuff later on. All right, down here, because we don't have seven different LED lights to output, what we're going to do is just take green to be the max of the first two, blue to be the max of the second two values, and then red to be the max of the third two values. And the reason why I did this, I played around with a couple of different things. You could average them, you could... You know, you can mess around with it, but I just found this to work the best in being able to visualize the music. I created a cutoff because I want to get rid of certain numbers that are below a threshold. And then if anything is below that cutoff, I'm just going to say set that equal to zero. Then down here, so what happens when you have red, green, and blue light? Well, then you kind of get white light, right? And white light on LEDs is not as interesting as something that's colored. So down here, we're basically setting the smallest value to just be equal to zero. And then we write those to our pins and we output Ultra Croatia at home, baby. My schematic, PCB layout, code, parts list are all listed in the description below. So if you wanna recreate this project, go ahead and take a look. All right, so now enjoy some footage from my live concert. 